Okay, I found a piece of Tupelo for the head and the body. And the first thing we're going to want to do is square up these pieces of Tupelo. Often they're a little bit warped. Uh, just through the drying process, they're kind of rough cut, at least the pieces that I have. So I'm going to square these up on the bandsaw and then we can cut out the body and the head. It's pretty noisy in the shop with the dust collector going, so I've taken the sound down so we can just watch the process. I'm just going to bandsaw that uh, to straighten that edge of the Tupelo block. You really have to be careful with a bandsaw and keep your hands away from the blade at all times. You can see I'm going to reposition my hand to go behind the blade so I'm not in front of the blade with any fingers. I struck a line on the other side, making sure I had enough width for the pattern of the decoy and just bandsawing that side to straighten things up. Okay, now that we have a nice squared up block, we can trace the pattern, side and top view. And uh, I always put the pattern up maybe a sixteenth of an inch because when I finish the decoy, we're going to want to sand that bottom smooth. So I want to leave a, a little additional material there to work with. Trace the pattern. Once that's traced, I use the square to transfer these lines up to the top of the front and tail of the bird. And do the same across the top of the block. Position the top pattern in place. Line that up with those sides, trace around this. I'm going to cut out this side profile first. You really want to take your time on these uh, side cuts. It's a deep cut for the bandsaw, so you don't, don't want to push it too hard. Being careful to position my thumb and fingers well away from the blade there. Now that the body profile is cut out, I'm going to take this piece that I caught off the top and I'm going to tack that back on the decoy in a couple of places where it won't be anywhere close to the to the bandsaw cut so that then we can cut out the top down profile. Okay, I've got that top piece tacked back on in a couple of places so it's nice and firm and just made sure it lined up well, it didn't shift at all. And now I'm gonna cut this bandsaw, this top down profile. You can see in this area where the tail is coming out of the 
rump. You have to work a little bit to create some relief with the bandsaw blade to give uh, yourself room to turn that corner. Now I'm going to remove those nails, get this scrap top piece out of the way, and then we can work on the body. You can see I put a center line back on the decoy, uh, just to give us a guideline and perspective. And then I'm going to do some angle cuts on the bandsaw to remove some of this lower wood on both sides. And then we'll do some angle cuts to take off some of this bulk wood and begin to round the decoy body. Okay, I've got the table saw angle set at 30 degrees. And I'm gonna use that to carefully, very carefully take off this hard corner on the bottom side and then also do the same by flipping it, the decoy on its side, keeping your hands totally away from the blade and taking some angle cuts to peel off some of this uh, heavy wood so we don't have to grind all of that off. Always take my time on these angle cuts. Don't, don't go too fast. Just uh, let the blade do its work. Keep your hands out of the way. You especially want to go slow on these upper body cuts because you're cutting off a lot more wood. And uh, this is kind of a judgment call. You just work slowly so you don't take too much wood off. And I normally do a couple of different angles on each side like this. And then call it good and grind the rest. That blade is pretty exposed and it's easy to for it to grab the decoy so use caution notice too here I'm not taking wood off where the primaries will be because I want to leave uh, wood there uh, and we don't want to cut cut that wood away and not have enough left for the cross primaries. Now for the head block, I'm gonna do the same thing. Square up this block by starting with a, a good straight cut. And uh, I know from my pattern that the head is two and three eighths inches wide. So I've picked a piece of wood that has plenty of width and also notice the grain is running lengthways here, up and down, and that's kind of the way I like to cut my heads out. You don't have to do that. You can do a go crosswise on the grain, but I just think it works a little better for me to cut the head out in, with the grain in that direction. Once I finish this first cut, I measure, make sure I strike a line uh, the, at the correct width for this second cut. Okay, I've traced around the pattern, and I always take an awl and just uh, mark the location of the center of the eye as a reference point. And then we'll cut this out on the bandsaw.
take your time here and uh, particularly in the neck area if there's a pretty tight bend like there is on this pattern I'm going to work to create a little bit of clearance there carefully back out of the blade and then go at it from the opposite angle to finish the cut we marked this eye location, I like to flip it over, flip the pattern over, get this lined up, and mark the location on the opposite side. Rather than drilling straight through, um, I like drilling halfway through from both sides so that I know this location is precise. I use a 1 8 inch drill bit here just as uh, a reference hole and go from about halfway through from each side and they normally meet right in the middle but that way I know I'm hitting that right where the pattern says it should be. Okay in today's video we just focused on how to properly cut out a head and a body. And I think it's important to start there. If you're just starting to make your own decoys, you're gonna start at the beginning. So we have a, a head and a body ready to begin carving. We'll start on the head next, and that'll be in the next session. Good carving to you.